This episode of Print TV is brought to you by Promo Print Ventures Limited. We are Promo Prints and we are based in factory based in Surulere and we produce, uh, we're from start to finish, we produce t-shirts, we brand, we have the first, uh, well the only automatic that I'm aware of right now, automatic printing carousel, uh, so we can print at least 400 pieces an hour of uh, lovely screen printed t-shirts, engraving, uh, transfers, anything from start to finish. The third thing we're going to look at today is the problem of untrained and unmot unmotivated workforce. I think that they run side by side. Any workforce that isn't really trained will at some point in time become unmotivated. Um, but I don't know what's, what you think, so maybe I, I'll, I'll allow you to take the first shot. Well, as regards uh, the workforce, I mean, we have a huge workforce in Nigeria. That's one of our strengths. So the main thing that we have to do, we have to train. Train, 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 you can never stop training enough because the more you train, the better your staff are. The whole thing that we're trying to do is that what we, what we try and do, even on our streets, we take, we take interns all the time and we continually train them because at any one point, even if our staff, maybe somebody could be sick, somebody could be unable to come to work, all the interns we've trained along the streets can actually come in and, and stop the gap. So what I'm saying is that don't be afraid to train, please, because people say, hey, if I train and then they leave, so what? You've helped to increase the better, tra better trained workforce out there, number one. Number two, what if they don't leave and you end up with your untrained staff forever? So please, let's motivate them, let's train them. It's very difficult, I know Nigeria is hard. Right, and uh, there's so many conflicting issues and problems that all of us are facing, and all our staff are facing. But at least if we can try and make things faster, easier, better for them, then they'll be more productive, we'll be happier, and we'll be able to, they'll be, these are things that also they can use in their own homes or whatever to actually produce better things for themselves and for us. Mm -hmm. So training for me is, uh, is a, it's 100%. I have heard also that an accountant took the bill of training to, to the boss, to the CEO. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, the, the cost for training is really high. And then the CEO asks him, because you know accountants, they're always yes. calculating figures. And the CEO asks him, have you, have you please tried to calculate the cost of not training? Exactly. Because if you train people, they're more confident to operate the equipment. Mm -hmm. they, 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 the productivity is always higher. And train people, will always want to be trained for that. So that helps motivation. And motivation is supposed to be a culture. For, for me, I think that every business owner must ensure that the culture of the organization is one that motivates. So this guy wants to move to the next level. He sees that I can move to the next level, or I can get a better training, or I can, I can, I mean, in your own case, they move from manual machine to automatic machine, you know? So that's some kind of motivation. So for, if, we're, if we're going to talk about solutions mm -hmm. uh, to the problem of untrained staff, we can only say you need to train a bit more. You need to train a bit more. You need to get more people trained and let them get their motivation from being trained. Yes, print education is key. So I think that uh, the onus is on people like you, Aki, also <laughs> to, <laughs> it's true, you know, to increase the kind of uh, courses or trainings that we can come for ourselves and I think you've had some we've come, and we've all benefited because you can never stop learning. Never, ever, ever stop learning. It doesn't matter how many years you've been in the industry, there's always new things coming up. So one of the things is that, like even to motivate your staff, how do you, I mean, you, people should be proud of what they do. So yes, in my former life I was a lawyer, <laughs> but I'm proudly a printer. And I say it proudly. You know, a lot of people, they feel, you know, like I, I, I've, we've, had, we've seen people in the industry who have been great printers. And then they want to become DJs. They want to become uh, makeup artists. They want to become all sorts of things. Be proud. That field is, is a red ocean. There are a million one, one of you. So let us train these guys to actually appreciate the fact of their skill uh, and be able to be the best printer that they can be. I will also, on a passing note, encourage entrepreneurs like you to also train themselves. Mm. Because I think that the more you train yourself, the more easier it is for you to train your workforce. Yes. Because once you, well, you cannot give what you don't have. Mm. 
So because you know and you're not satisfied with what you see, it pushes you to get them trained to be able to do a bit more mm. and um, efficiency will be improved. The long and short of the story is that we want efficiency to improve. We want efficiency. And, um, and we want our staffs less demotivated and, and we training never helps. be satisfied. The difference between us and a lot of the um, first world countries, let's see, is that you produce an iPhone 8, oh, a wonderful phone. Now, they're already working on iPhone 9, they're working on <laughs> iPhone 10. We don't say because we are good at this point, we have to still continue to be. Uh, what's that book? Good to Great. Good to Great. Good to Great. You know, you have to keep on trying to push yourself. And in pushing yourself, you push your team. So, in fact, I love the fact of people who have left our companies and come back and say to, wow, you know, I know what I got while I was there. You know, and so the, the, the print world continues to grow. Mm. So, so that brings us to the fact that some people don't appreciate what they have yes, until yes. they leave, yes. until they lose it. So, yes. uh, so to all the uh, operators and employees out there, appreciate what you have for now. Appreciate what you have. <laughs> You're a printer. Thank you. Thank you on that. <laughs> so point number four, let's look at government policies. I personally think that um, we're not in a good position with the policies we get from government. And um, I cannot totally blame the government because the first thing we need to do is to gather data. Data helps us, statistics helps us to know which area to focus on and which area not to focus on. And then it will guide government into making the policies that work for the people. For instance, how many printers do we have in Nigeria? I don't think we have that data. No. How many screen printers have automatic machines? Today we don't know. How many printers train their, their operators? We have absolutely no data. So if you want to make policy for that kind of sector, what kind of policy are we going to make? So that brings us to, to, to the fact that the only people that government will make nice policies for will be the ones they can relate with, the ones that they have a bit of information about them. So I think that as printers, we need to help governments gather information that we can present to them. I would personally like to know how many printers are there in Nigeria. So if we can tell government we have 10 million members, boy, policies will be formed in our direction. I, and, and that's my thinking. I don't know yeah, about and you. And we also have to guide the policy because they are not experts in that field. We are in our field. And uh, we know about our own little subsectors. And we can gather data. I think each of us has to be responsible for that. Because truly, as you said, without data, we're, not, we're making decisions ad hoc. We're not making decisions based on calculated risks and calculated uh, problems and solutions. So uh, government policy is kind of, you know, quite reactionary sometimes, yeah. you know, closing the borders. We cannot be able to um, maybe get some supplies in and things like that at, time, but at times. So that's the reason why jobs are taken abroad sometimes. Yeah, that, that's, not, that, help, that, that's that, not helping our situation at all. That may, maybe it's time to also look at that policy of job, go, job going abroad. Yes. Um, we buy our, our materials from the abroad. Yes. We buy, our, we buy our materials abroad. We take everything, we, we get everything from there. And when you produce a book, educational book, for instance, and you bring it back in, you don't pay duty on them. But we will pay duty on the materials, we'll pay duty on the equipment. How then can you compete with those who will go print abroad? So that, 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 that's, uh, that's some policy we that improve? we need to look at. How do we improve? Because you, if you say, okay, the quality may not be as good, how do you make sure that the quality improves to the quality of abroad? It's by trying us and then correcting things, training, exactly. doing all these things, but making sure that you, you help. You regulate us. Regulate us. Yeah. yeah, we're fine to be regulated. And then let's get it right. But I think this thing about, you know, you, I see people in my industry, many the apparel industry, they don't even have offices in Nigeria. They have not even a single machine in Nigeria. And they get jobs, print in China, print in India, come back. What is the benefit to the economy? Nothing. If you, if you ask me, I think that we should develop a policy that will encourage industrialization. The more people we can get out of the streets, the better exactly. for, 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 for an economy like Nigeria. Yes. We need to remove duty on equipment and machineries. Anything that will help us employ people, we don't need to pay duty on them. We will gain, the government will gain in more people being employed, we will gain in more people getting out of the streets, the environment becoming safer and 
and um, um, easier to walk on the streets. You know, foreigners will get attracted to us and things like that. So, if government is listening, maybe it's, it would be good to make. Uh, purchasing uh, duty-free equipment, you know, when we get our equipment in, we don't pay duty on them. That would help the industry. Yes, and even a fast track, even a fast track. If, if you have production machines that are coming in to help the economy of Nigeria, I really feel that same thing, better pricing, uh, no taxes, and a fast track, because as you can see, there's a problem with the ports right now, and uh, we're not able to get in goods as fast as, uh, as we can. So we cannot even plan we can't even say that, okay, we, we order on this day and we actually receive on this day. So we're very destabilized. So the main thing that we need to do is, well, we want to be consistent. Yes, we? yeah, sure. We, we want sure. to be people sure. of our word. We don't want to be classified as the tailors. You know how tailors are classified as, that if we, I mean, you know, you know how it is. So printers, we want to be people of integrity and do good jobs. Uh, policy is about the people. If we can get put ourselves together, it's easy to influence government policy. That's my thinking, actually. But I think that we, in the print industry, we're still not together. If we come together, we can influence policies. For instance, we don't have the accurate data, but it is assumed that one trillion naira amount of jobs are being printed out of Nigeria yearly. If that kind of money stays in Nigeria, we know what it will do to this really economy. Grow, grow I mean, just industry. recently, just recently, the coronavirus thing, I read in the papers that $120 billion um, worth of fabric is going to Turkey because the Chinese cannot produce what the orders, the back, backlog of orders they had. So they had to move it to some companies. In. Can we, as Nigerian printers, position ourselves to attract that kind of printing? You know? so. We blame the government, but I think we also need to blame ourselves sometimes. We, we are not together, we're not united. We're, yes, we're, we're thinking of ourselves alone. We need to think about the general industry and that will help us take um, the printing industry to another height. Yes, yeah. and I think also that we have to be very uh, adjustable. So basically for us, uh, the, the, recession year, the recession years actually were our biggest growth years because you could not bring in anything from abroad during those years. There was no dollar, you couldn't find dollar to even bring in anything. And that was when we learned how to produce most things here. And we have stuck to that. So there is a benefit in not being, if something is easy for you to get from abroad, then of course you're gonna do it. But if you, you try and, you know, policy changes where you sort of, it's not as easy as you can just be able to get it. And then you, you it grows the homegrown industry. In other and words, they say that necessity is the mother of invention. So yeah. let's use the bad policies to invent some new ways but of doing also, things. But then also, to my fellow printers, we also have to better ourselves. There's no point. If you're going to do something, do it well. So if you do it well, then why would anybody go abroad? 